Hey YouTube, it's me, it's me, it's the man who likes to R-A-N-T, dropping a fresh V.I.D. for you today. And what I thought I'd do for you guys today is lay down my predictions and problems with the Great Balls of Fire. God, what a terrible name. Pay-per-view card. So, here we go. Uh, first match, which is on the pre-show, which for once I, I actually want to see, is... Neville versus Akira Tozawa for the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, Vince, Vince, my boy, let me level with you for a little bit here. Why the hell is a championship match on the pre-show? Moreover, why is a division that you're trying to make legitimate and having their championship defended on the pre-show? Vince, let me explain something to you about your fans, and I think that's pretty much universal across the board, whether you're hardcore or whether you're casual. If a match appears on the pre-show, the fans are like, I don't have to care about this. So they don't care about the cruiserweight division, which you want them to care because you brought it back to make it a staple of your flagship show. Moreover, why is a championship match on the pre-show ahead of a match that rightly belongs on the pre-show? Because while it was a compelling story, <clears throat> Enzo and Kaz, in my opinion, is the match that should be on the pre-show. But anyway, uh, back to the predictions. I don't see any reason why Neville should lose this match. However... I do think it pertinent to begin to choose who the next Cruiserweight Champion should be, and I don't see any reason why that couldn't be Akira, Tez Akira Tezawa. So, for the purposes of this match, we need some heelish tactics that lead to a screw job finish where Tozawa should have won but didn't, and then he could be like, Oh, you screw over ancient uh, Japanese man. We don't stand for this kind of thing. I demand a rematch. And then at one of the big four pay-per-views, a stipulation is added where um, Neville can't get out of the match, easily has to wrestle it straight up, and then, and only then, could Akira Tozawa win, hyping the power of Tozawa, and thusly adding a small bit of credibility to Titus Worldwide, which I do think is a viable gimmick for the future. Now, that's done. Next match, um, Enzo Amore versus Big Kaz. This one, I was all set to, to say, you know, Kaz should destroy Enzo and squash him, it should be a quick affair, but now that you've actually made Enzo into the viable babyface and shown that he has some aggression, Kaz shouldn't kill him outright. <clears throat> However, if by chance you happen to believe that Enzo Amore has even a ghost chance of winning this particular match, there's only one word to describe you, and I'm gonna spell it out for you. S-C-U-P-I-D! Did you think I was going to go with the incorrect spelling of soft? I feel bad for you. But no, um, do I think Enzo can make a good showing of it? Yeah, and maybe then we'll finally figure out if the guy can actually wrestle. I hope he can. Um, nothing, nothing to really move on here. Um, basic few that I could see going for a couple pay-per-views, and then hopefully... Kaz will go on to bigger and brighter things, because I see nothing but upside in that young man, and hopefully they'll find something for Enzo Amore to do. Um, moving on. Next match, Dean Ambrose and The Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. This feud has gone on forever. And um, I'm about to die a little inside. Uh, you know, The Miz has done excellent work lately, and that hurts me to say, because every time I give The Miz positive reinforcement, a part of me just goes, ugh. But nonetheless, um, there's no reason for him to drop the title back to, to Ambrose. I uh, fully see The Miz Taraj coming in to uh, interfere in this match, and uh, that's how The Miz will hold on to the title. 
uh, it might be nice if he beat Dean Ambrose clean, so Miz can move on to other opponents that are just as worthy of a shot at the white title. Uh, because we are trying to build that up. It's amazing to me, however, that this title, whose legacy was once so ripe with history and making big names, that is now in tatters. So I'm hoping with this run with The Miz, if he begins to beat quality people and beat them convincingly, the Intercontinental title will be begin to regain some of the prestige it has lost over the years. Um, next match, let's see here. We have Cesaro and Sheamus versus the Hardy Boys in a 30-minute Iron Man match for the Raw Tag Team titles. There is no reason that Cesaro and Sheamus should lose the tag titles to the Hardy Boys. I'm hoping they keep this feud going long enough where... Little by little, we see more and more of the Broken Hardys come out. Of course, that won't really happen till Anthem and the Hardys uh, resolve their, their stuff. I mean, and uh, just as a quick side note on that, like, Jeff, I, I know that you're very keen on intellectual property and having things used against you, but two things, real quick. Um, one... The Hardys are more than likely not coming back to your promotion anytime soon, especially how the business relationship between you and the Hardys ended. There are too many other promotions that would gladly welcome the Hardy Boys with open arms, given their prestige. Also, given that um, Impact Wrestling, now Global Force Wrestling at the time of this, of this recording, is still so fiscally effed in the A that um, it might prove uh, important to take the money that Vince might offer you for the broken uh, gimmick rights and use it to pay some of your outstanding debts. I don't care um, how much you try to sell me on the fact that supposedly WWE is not interested in the Broken Hardys, they are, because if they weren't, they would have Matt scrub out the blonde streak in his hair, they would have him stop doing the delete notion, uh, they would stop having him do the yes and the kind of uh, broken speak that he, d he does from time to time, although it's not as prevalent, but it's still there, letting us know that he hasn't forgotten about the character completely. So, honestly, like, it's... It's a lose for you because you're giving up what was your hottest character, but despite your stance on intellectual property law, um, you, you lost the character when you damaged your relationship between them. Uh, now on to perhaps what I think is the most pointless match on the card, and that is the rivalry between Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, you guys know my stance on Bray Wyatt and his gimmick and how much I like it, but he's almost damaged beyond repair at this point. And um, you can't walk around calling yourself a god and lose matches. JBL called himself a wrestling god for the year going into WrestleMania 21. And you know what? By hook or crook, he managed to win constantly and consistently, and we hated him for it, and that's why it worked. And that's not what Bray is doing. Bray loses consistently. How Bray has managed to keep his theme music and not fall solely on the status of being a jobber is beyond me, but it's only because his fans say, no, we refuse to have you put this character in complete obscurity, and thank you for that very much. That having been said, the Bray Wyatt losing streak shows no sign of ending anytime soon, and I don't see it happening Sunday. Uh, very sorry, Seth Rollins wins. It, it won't be a squash, but um, the architect or the future, whatever the heck he's calling himself now, will come out ahead of the former patriarch of the Bray Wyatt family, unless there's interference by a former Wyatt family member, and that's unlikely because, as we all know, he's busy later in the night. On we go. 
next match. Um, Alexa Bliss versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. This has the potential to be a good match, and this one I'm going to go with my heart instead of my head, because I really want Sasha Banks to win the Raw Women's Championship. Not only because she deserves it, although believe me, that's re that should be reason enough. Um, but, look, let, let, let me lay down the good qualities of Alexa Bliss. She is fantastic on the mic, and she's smart, and she knows how to deal with the fans when they do get on her with that what chant and everything else. That's fantastic. Just as a wrestler, she's not that good. Um, unfortunately, given, given the fact that, um, Alexa did tap out to the bank statement, uh, on the Raw before Great Balls of Fire, wrestling history dictates that whoever gets the rub on the Raw before a pay-per-view usually ends up losing the match on the actual pay-per-view. So I don't see any reason that Bliss is going to uh, drop the title, although I'm going to hold out hope that that's still what happens because uh, Sasha deserves so much better than she got. But at least she hadn't been... Buried like Bailey, hashtag buried like Bailey. That 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 should be on 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 this video. Um, but that's that's the the extent of our uh, of our women's division here on Raw. Uh, on to the second most important match of the night. Um, the ambulance match between Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns. Now I was all set to declare Braun. Um, the winner of this match because he's returned from injury and this, that, and the other. And part of me does hope that that's still what happens. Um, unfortunately, I've heard plans that the instead of having Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, which was the long-standing plan at the start of the year, uh, it sounds like that's being pushed to SummerSlam. So. In order to make Roman a viable opponent for Mr. Lesnar, I don't see how you can't um, you can't have Roman go over in this ambulance match. Uh, this is one that could go either way, and as long as it's a decent match, I'll be happy. <clears throat> it is what it is. And now on to the pièce de résistance, if you will. The Universal Title Match between Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe. Now, let's get the obvious thing out of the way. Because of what I just mentioned in the previous match, unfortunately, Samoa Joe is not winning on this night. He's not. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it does, however, make much more sense to... If you were going to have... Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar and try to have Roman win again, I do think a Samoan on Samoan championship match at one of the big four, probably Mania, would be huge. And that would instantly cement Joe as a credible main eventer if he hasn't done it already. And if he hasn't done it for you, what more does he have to do? Uh, Joe has been fantastic in this feud. They've made him look like a monster, which is why he will not be affected by a loss from Lesnar. I'm going to assume that these two are going to work. I'm going to assume that Brock is going to be willing to work, and Joe is going to make him work. And he's going to come that close, that close to getting the title. But somehow, via a Kimura or perhaps an F5... Lesnar retains, and that um, that should make most people happy, depending on your stance of how you feel about Lesnar being a champion. Um, on the whole, I expect good things for this pay-per-view, and I expect it to deliver. So I'm coming in with a lot of of hype for Great Balls of Fire. Please change the name. This is a, this is a terrible name for a pay-per-view. Change it next year. Um... What are, you, what are your thoughts on the Great Balls of Fire card, and um, what are your expectations, excuse me? Uh, post them down in the comments below. Um, 
Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you don't want to miss a video by The Wrestling Ranter, click that subscribe button and click the bell icon so that notifications when I do make a new video go to your device of choice. Ranter's going to get off the soapbox. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.